everybody, we're going to jump right into a code walkthrough for the Christmas tree video game. Um, I'll have a link down below to the main video. If you didn't see the video, you should definitely go check that out. Um, this code is basically turning on and off LEDs with different colors using a couple of buttons. Now, there's a bunch more game logic to it, but really, overall, it's pretty simple. I will say that this code is not optimized. It is prototype code. Uh, there may be things that are confusing, that are quick, that are not the best way to do things. This was done very quickly to make the project work. So with that in mind, let's jump into what all's here. And I hope that it's helpful, gives you a little insight in, into how to make a really simple game and to give you some examples of things that you can use. Feel free to use this code, modify it, do whatever you want to with it. I don't care. But we can't provide any support for it. All right, so up at the top here, we've got three libraries that are included. One is called Easy Button. This makes it super easy to have buttons uh, work. You can set up a function to be called anytime a button is pressed. This handles the bouncing, which is a problem with some buttons on Arduino and in other places as well. It's a really simple, uh, good library to use for buttons. DM Timer is a timer class, which is not absolutely necessary, but uh, kind of lets you change the speed of the game, the speed at which the entire program loops uh, by using this timer. We're using it really loosely here. Like I said, it's not essential. Fast LED is the LED library. This does tons of stuff, works with tons of different types of LEDs. It's a great library, has tons of stuff built into it that you can take advantage of rather than having to start from scratch. There are variations on all three of those libraries. There are a bunch of different ones that do basically the same thing. These are just the three that I chose here. Up here at the top, we define the pin numbers of the two control buttons, left and right, and the LEDs inside those buttons. So we have button one pin, button one LED pin, et cetera. And these just define what those pin numbers on the Arduino are. You set up using those pin numbers, you set up both buttons with the, uh, these functions right here. Uh, and that puts them kind of in the system. Gets them, lets them know, lets the script know that those are buttons and will handle them accordingly. <coughs> Excuse me. The palettes right here and all of this stuff, these are all to do with the LED um, library and this gives it a palette of colors of that work together that we can use for one of the screen savers i'll tell you about that later on and then down here this is setting up a bunch of variables pretty much um, we've got uh, a speed here which is used to how for how quickly the game should loop that can be changed because it's a variable so that's nice so you can make the game faster or slower as you play we have one called render game as text this was made uh, for the debugging process so that you can turn this on and off and actually have the game rendered using text characters in the serial monitor so you can see it. It's not easy to watch. It doesn't give you a whole lot of information, but you can actually see things move on a text game board. Uh, or if, if this is set to false, then it's going to render it through the LEDs. So it's a good way to practice and work on the code without having the LEDs hooked up. Two variables here that are really important, the number of LED strips and the number of lights per LED, I mean, per strip. Uh, so those are important and they inform a bunch of other things in the future. Screensaver toggling, uh, these are variables that are used for, uh, you can have multiple screensavers in place and it will go through them. It'll use one uh, and then after a gameplay, it'll flip to the, to the second type of screensaver. Then down here, we're creating a multi-dimensional array called Game Array, and this is a uh, rows and columns based grid, and it's using those number of strips and number of LEDs per strip variable that we showed up above. So this is our, uh, our array, our multi-dimensional array, and this contains the game board. Every spot is a light, representative of a light. And it holds a value, which is zero, means there's no light on, there's nothing there. One means there's a piece of snow or a piece of light there. And then if it equals two, that's uh, where the game is, or where the game player is. We'll work on that later on. We took those same numbers and made the LED, uh, the list of LEDs to be addressed. This is for the fast LED library to use. It makes a dimensional array with the number of strips and on each one of those strips it has this number of LEDs. These other variables are all things that are just used further down. They should be relatively self-explanatory. It gets confusing when you look at the 
increase drop threshold, wait for drop, stuff like that. And that's all about how often it drops a new piece of snow onto the game board. Uh, this part is confusing. It was written very quickly, uh, but that's what these are for, and they're used further down. And the last thing here before the setup is defining our timer. The timer has that speed that we set up above, and that tells how fast the whole game should run. Now, if you know Arduino stuff, uh, setup and loop are the two essential functions. So setup kind of gets everything up and ready to go. This runs one time. Got a connection to the serial monitor here so that we can see things in the monitor, see the text. Um, setting up those pallets again, like I mentioned, setting up the pins for the LEDs in the buttons and turning those on. So they're just on all the time. And then we're using those same variables that I showed you up above to create inside the fast LED object individual strings of lights. And on each one of those strings, we tell it how many lights are there. These lines right here are essential for the lights to be able to turn on and off and for us to be able to control them. This is what creates an addressable location for the code to work on. We start the two buttons. That's just part of the library that gets those going. And then we give each one of those buttons a function to be called when it's pressed. This is the simplest way to do uh, a functioning button just by having using a library like this and having a function that's called anytime you press the button. It's, it's just a great way to do it. And then we're writing out that the game is ready to go. Like I said, this function happens one time and sets everything up, and then it's done. The real action happens in the loop, which, oddly enough, very little is happening here. Every time this loop is triggered, which is over and over and over, it checks the timer to see if the, the timer is expired, and if it has, then it does TikTok. TikTok is my own function where everything is really happening. Um, and it, I've broken it down to a bunch of functions to make it more readable. But essentially, every tick of the game, this is happening. We read both of the buttons, left and right, to see if they have a new value. Um, if a new game is waiting to be started, as if you pressed a button, and then it it's queued up a new game, goes to the next tick. If that is the truth, then it starts a new game. And we'll look at that function in just a second. If a game is running, if the variable game on is true, then it does the next step in the game. If it's not running, then it steps the screensaver. So it just alternates between these two things based on whether a game is currently happening. And then at the end, it renders the game board. And this just handles turning on and off the actual LEDs based on whatever you did, whether it's a game or a screensaver right above it. So we'll start back here with start new game. Start new game sets up all the variables that we talked about ahead of time, gives them their default values. It clears the game board by looping through rows and columns and setting every position to zero. So that means there's nothing on the game board. Now this is not affecting the lights, this is just affecting the multi-dimensional array that holds the information for the game board. This is starting a new game, so we're clearing it all out, setting it all up, we turn the game on equal true. We turn off the game queue because we've already started a new one here. And so this all happens right up here in this TikTok function. And then that means the game is now happening. It's set up. It's ready to go. We get down here and check it. If it's currently going or about to start, then we're going to do step game. Step game is where the majority of the kind of action happens here. And I promise it looks worse than it is. Up here at the top, we've got some uh, a countdown, an incrementer, or the opposite of an incrementer, to drop a piece. So every so-and-so clicks of the game, it checks to see if it needs to drop a new piece of snow above. That is a function that is handled down below. And then essentially, we're going to be looping over the entire rows and columns array here. And we're moving everything down. So a big thing here is when you're checking a game board like this that has, I'm air quoting, gravity in it, meaning things are falling from the top to the bottom, you start at the bottom. So we're starting at the total number of columns, the total number of rows, bottom right corner, and working to the left and working up. We're checking each one of those values. We're getting that value as lock value. So any place that you're looking at, we're getting its value. And then we want to look right above it by changing its the, the row above it and seeing if there's something there. And if there is, then we want to inherit that value down and then clear it out above. So we're moving 
looking above us, looking for a value. If it's snow, we want to pull that snow down into the, exi the current location and then clear out that location that we're pulling from so that we don't end up with double snow. So, like I said, getting our value, looking above it, getting its value. If it's not equal to nothing, then we take that value, copy it into our current location, and then we go back to the above location and clear that out. And I've got this written in the comments, so hopefully that makes a little more sense. And I said it like three times, so hopefully I covered it. Um, when we get to the bottom, uh, there's nothing above it. I guess when we get to the top, there's nothing above it. So that's what this line's for. It, it's not checking anything, I think. So that means we've looped through every position and inherited down things that are above them. <coughs> and then when we get to uh, the bottom row, we want to... Well, let me say that again. We've inherited everything down. Now we need to fill each location with the relevant stuff. So, number two represents the game player. So if you are um, playing and you are at a certain level, game level, one, zero, one, or two, then you're going to color that location blue. If you're three, four, five, you're going to make it yellow. So the color changes as you progress in level. This is all about the color of the player LED. So if we close that up and get that out of the way, it makes it look like a lot less. Because you're inheriting snow, and those are always white. If you're dealing with the color of uh, the player, then you're dealing with the color. And that's what this whole line, this whole switch statement is about. So if you take that out of the equation, it looks a lot easier. Um, once we've looped through the entire game board, we get down here in the bottom row, we want to check for collisions. And basically this is saying, is there a piece of snow in the same position as the player? And if there is, then the game is over. That's what that uh, function does. And that's the gameplay. It just does that over and over. It pulls everything down from above and checks to see if it's running into the player. And if anything is, game is over. Um, essentially, this entire thing is looping through the rows, looping through the columns, and checking stuff. That's what the whole game is. So if we close up that um, step game, and we'll go down to check collision just so you can see it. Super simple. You you feed in a position um, to that function, and it tries to see if that position is the same as the player. And if it is, the game is over, and you play a little animation because you lost. Another thing I want to look at is dropping the piece. Anytime there's a new piece added to the top, this is a little confusing, um, but basically, it only drops a piece uh, on an increment so every certain number of game steps you increment the level based on the level you drop a new piece um, and it gets faster you add more pieces per drop things like that uh, it, it's just a little bit hard to look at but essentially you're just randomizing on the top row you're randomizing a location and filling it with a white light filling it with a one which will turn into a white light so you get in kind of random drops across the top. As the level progresses, you drop more than one. That's what that's doing, basically. The other big important thing here is the render. It's very simple. Um, this top section is what's used most often. So if the render game as text is false, meaning we don't want it render as text, we want to render as lights, all you're doing is telling the fast LED library to show all the lights that we've set in previous statements. Just turns them on, and then there's a slight delay. That's very straightforward. The other section down here is if you want to see it as text in the serial monitor. All it's doing here, again, is looping over the rows, looping over the columns, and then writing out the value of whatever is in that position. Kind of the same as the game play, but we're just going through getting the values of each position putting an X where the player exists, putting a space where there's nothing, and putting a the value or a one in anywhere there's a piece of snow. So if you run this, you'll kind of see what, what this is doing, but it's just drawing out a grid of characters. Let's see. The other maybe important thing is the screensaver, and I'm not going to go through it one uh, line by line, but it's, it's a set of animations 
uh, that loop through rows and columns just like everything before but if you're in one version of the screensaver you either make lights red or green you alternate the uh, the rows and you could make that into anything but it's essentially it's looping over the entire grid and turning the lights red or green now the alternate screensaver is down here and it creates from the color palette a random color or pulls a color from this palette so the colors all kind of work together it looks like uh, kind of flickering blue white just pretty colors and you could change that to a rainbow you could change it to whatever and you could add more screensavers here so it goes between more options but this is essentially just making the lights do something when the game is not being played uh, the only other thing that we didn't really cover here is the button presses. These are really straightforward, but let me show you one. <clears throat> if the game uh, is, if there's not a new game ready to go and you press a button, then uh, two things. If the game is currently running, then you want to actually use that button as, a, as an action. If there's not a game running, then you want to use that button press as a way to start a new game. So let's assume that the game is running. You press the left button here, and it prints out that left, just so you can see it. And as long as you are not all the way to the left already, you want to move the player's position left by subtracting a number. These positions are from 0 to the number of total columns. So if you are at 3, and you make that number smaller, you are moving to 2. You're moving to the left. The opposite is true for the right button. The other thing down here, if there is not a game playing, then your button press, all it does is cues a new game. And so on the next tick of this entire thing, it sees this value is true, it runs the start new game function, and you're good to go. I know that was fast. It's a lot of information. Uh, it may not cover everything you need, but that is the essentials of this entire project. Looping through a multi-dimensional array, checking values, and then turning on and off LEDs based on those values. That's the game. Uh, this is a very simple version. It could easily be made more complex. There's all sorts of things you could add to it. And I hope this is a good starting point for you. And I uh, hope you enjoy this. Thanks.